Guys, welcome back to another episode of Fishing with Timmy Turtle. Apologies for the lack of videos. I've been pretty busy and also fished a lot, but hasn't seemed to catch anything. Got a new reel, been meaning to test it out in a video. Two weeks of chasing Trevs uh, around the Gold Coast, and I have found two flathead and a surface whiting. It's been pretty dismal of late. I don't know whether it's my fault or the fish's fault, but not really enough footage over two weeks of fishing to kind of put together any sort of videos. It's been a bit frustrating. We've just had like a weekend full of solid rain, so I'm expecting, and we've got southerlies blowing for like three or four days now. So I'm hoping that after this week, the fishing goes bonkers. I went out this morning trying to swim bait some stuff. Relatively success, my first saltwater swim bait fish, which was awesome. Oh my goodness, I hooked up to something. I just threw the swim bait in and something just smashed it. It's like second or third cast. What is that? My goodness. Come on, up you come. Oh, that's got some power. That has got some power. That was like second or third cast. I don't even have my cameras running. So he just hit it off the surface. Oh, it's a Trev. My goodness. Oh, oh, oh. oh I'm not as worried now. Oh, look at that. Holy, how is that? That is awesome. Man, oh man. That got the heart racing. That is a PB GT, surely. Oh, oh, I haven't seen the fish that big in a while, so maybe it's not. One, two, three, four. 50 centimeter GT, nice work. Stop, stop. First swim bait saltwater fish. I'm stoked. Pretty happy with that. 50 centimetre GT. I'm gonna get him back in the water. Ow. Oh, he cut me. Oh man, I didn't know what that was. He hit it so hard and I was like, oh no. Thought it was a big jack. This is what I'm throwing around today. I lost mine the other day searching for flathead. Cast it off. I spent an hour swimming around the creek trying to find it. It's a floating one, so I thought it would have been on the surface, but I reckon the weight of the leader weighed it down and it sunk and I couldn't find it. I was devastated, so I borrowed this one off Brock, told him if I lose it, I'll give him 40 bucks. Now I'm cold. There was a school of mullet just up here and they're all just flicking around the surface, looking like they were dodging something. So I thought, oh, I'll have a few casts. Didn't even have any of my cameras on. Did not expect that. Gonna try and go out jack fishing this afternoon, but my camera gear all needs to be charged, so, and my boat batteries, that's all on charge, and we've still seen red lights on the charging table, which is annoying. As soon as that's all ready to go, I'm gonna jump on the water this afternoon, hit some canals and see what happens, but. So I'm gonna do a video this afternoon of something that's been asked heaps over the last couple of months, and I've kind of been avoiding it. Without further ado, I'm gonna go through all my rod and reel arsenal that I've purchased over this winter that hopefully lasts me the next couple of seasons. Welcome to my humble abode, this is it, and you're about to see my dream wall which I constructed the other day. Here we go guys. This is the wall I built the other day, so I didn't screw anything into the wall and dad kill me. So we're gonna go through my rods and reels. The good thing about this board is you can just nail anything in at any time and just hang it up. Fairly simple design. You just get cup hooks from Buddings. You can buy them in a pack of eight and then some pine, put it on a sheet of 12 mil ply, which is the same for your raft if you're building a raft. I didn't do a DIY video. I'm not, not sure how many people would have been interested in something like that, but it was fairly easy. I'm sure you guys can work it out. Let's start with the old stuff first. Starting with this one, we've got a Daiwa Zillion 9.1 Retrieve. It's not actually one of my favorite reels. I did use it all the last season and found that it was too big in the palm of my hand. So I have tiny little hands and it wasn't as comfortable as some of the Shimano models. So I'm a massive Shimano bait caster fan, but I'm loving my Daiwa spin wheels. That actually hasn't got a home yet. I'm probably gonna put it on a rod just as a muck around rod, but I haven't decided yet. Maybe like a really light sort of setup. Just above that, we've got an old off the rocks rod that you saw in a lot of my videos, Daiwa Sweepfire 8.2. Eight um, cast weights, one to three ounce, two piece. Got that out of my mum's garage. As you can see, it's an old rod, but it served me very well. Caught a lot of trevs, hooked and lost a lot of jewies, 
Actually, I got a big jury on that one. That's the rod I got my big jury on down at Brunswick. Then we've got, we move up to this one. We got the Samaki Zing. Uh, this was one of my light ones I was going to use for bass fishing and that sort of thing. Two to six pound, one to three kilo. Six foot ten, two piece. Not a big fan of two pieces. Didn't know when I bought it. Bought it, then realized it was two. Rookie error. Then moving up to, these are kind of my spare rods. My Akuta Blackhawk. A lot of my Trevs were caught with this one in my first year of fishing. Two to four kilo, fast action. Really liked this rod actually. Uh, this is meant to be up underneath this thing here, but this has been broken since I bought it. Literally broke like two days after. And I've wedged it down there and now it's stuck there. I kind of want to cut it off. It's a little aluminium piece. So I think you pay about 120 bucks for it. Um, and, and it was like a great all-rounder rod. Uh, the insert did snap off and I've super glued that back in. So I'm not sure how long that's going to last, but it's been in there for quite a while. They're my old rods. And now we're going to start with my new gear. Quick interruption. I ended up by, I bought one Mega Bass racing condition rod and really liked it. And then I was talking to Brock and Brock goes, there's like a series of five and I was like, I need the whole lot. So I used to do a lot of kayaking when I, you know, I did kayaking for 10 years. So I had a lot of kayaking gear. And when I kind of got out of kayaking and got into fishing, I thought, am I gonna go back to kayaking? And the answer was no, cause I'm doing this fishing a lot and the good times to kayak are also the good times to fish. So I sold a lot of my old kayak gear to purchase a lot of this new gear. And then I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna invest it in some expensive fishing gear that's gonna last me for hopefully the next five, you know, five, 10 years, or whatever that I can fish with. So this rod and reel arsenal is probably gonna be it for a while. This is where a lot of the money came from was that none of it was given to me. All this was kind of purchased by myself and the rest of it was just saved up. So I'd save for two weeks, I wouldn't eat, I wouldn't drive anywhere further than work and then I would just buy um, any individual piece that I needed left over. And then the last lot of fishing gear came from my tax back this year. And then that's where all the money's come from. So I only got like one or two pieces that I want to finish this off and they're both off the rocks setups, land based. So I can do some, some fishing like the Morning Tide Boys um, cause that looks insane and I'd love to do it. Their gear is crazy expensive. So they're the last kind of two pieces I need. Other than that, I'm pretty well set up that I can fish for anything at any time, throw any lure I want. So I'm pretty happy with that. Starting with the first Mega Bass racing condition, we have the two to six pound. They're all seven foot. They are super nice rods. Mega Bass was closing down or changing names or something like that. So 530 bucks down to 270 bucks. Angler's Warehouse bought the last 400 of these. So if you're running out at other stores, Angler's Warehouse are gonna gonna have the last of these rods if you're looking at getting them. When you fish for six hours at a time, having nice gear just makes it so much more enjoyable to fish with instead of having real seas up on you. So I've got that paired with a Sedona 2000, the high speed 2000 shallow spool. I think it's a high speed 2000. Sedona HGS C2000, that's that bad boy there. That's Cast King six pound line. It's a four strand braid, pink, Takes about a month to be delivered from China. It is super cheap and actually not too bad for the price you pay. I think it's like 10 bucks for 300 meters. And I normally run a six or four pound leader. I chase brim, whiting, anything kind of off the boat around, you know, oyster racks, that sort of thing. The six pound four strand braid, because it's super thin, casts super light lures a real long way. That's what I kind of got that for is brim and whiting. Moving up to the two to eight pound Mega Bass racing condition. This bad boy here. I bought the whole range. So this one I kind of spilled, I got paired up with a Caldea Z, two and a half thousand. Run six pound suffix on that. And I normally run a six to 10 pound leader, depending on what I'm fishing for. Oh, what do we got on cast weights for this? Five grams, max lure weight, two to six pound, seven foot. So on the next one, two to eight pound, we've got a max cast lure rating of six grams. So I normally throw like up to one eighth on that one. Anything over one eighth is getting a bit heavy. This one, one sixth is not too bad. Throw one sixth or lighter, small crankbaits, uh, top water, that sort of thing, sugar pens, small sugar pens. I got it spooled up with six pound braid. So it's got a lot of braid on there. I kind of got it for like land-based trev fishing, uh, like small trevs and that sort of thing. Brim, bass, anything like that, run small light leaders on it. So this is kind of my land-based brim reel, just in case something big, big grabs it, 
you've got plenty of stuff on there. I'd probably find structure before you run out of line. Next up, we've got my, this is my favorite setup. Out of all the rods, this is the best all-rounder. Pretty much the same as the Akuda Blackhawk. It's two to 10 pound. Cast weight is seven grams. I have this with, matched up with a high-speed Surtate, the 2510. Unbelievable reel, unbelievable rod. One of my favorite setups. I pick this up more than anything else and love fishing with it. I do put the RCS knobs on, on these because I don't like the original knobs on them. Can't believe you pay $26 for a bit of plastic like that, but. So this is kind of my like Trev's reel, all my dew fish. I was fishing with dewies over the winter with this. It's got 10 pound suffix braid on there. What is it? Suffix advanced super line. Um, I run suffix on all my rods. Just really enjoying suffix at the moment. Not a big fan of gyro J braid after losing the amount I've lost in the, in the first year of fishing. I'm having less troubles with suffix. So that's 10 pound suffix and we've got on there, I normally run a 10 to 12 pound liter on on this bad boy two to ten pound rod yeah just a really nice all-round rod I have cast up to half an ounce with this rod it is touch and go you can run half ounce with a small lure does cast a three-eighth of an ounce really well with those small plastics three-eighth of an ounce that's what I was using for the Dewey's anything like a trick swim or something like that you know even 10 gram metals did chase Taylor for a bit so looking forward to chasing Trevs on the flats with this this year. Really nice rod, can't wait to hook some big Trevs. Next up, this is kind of the, this is the five to 16 pound Megabass racing condition. 21 gram Lure Max. I like to throw four inch paddle tails or curly tails with quarter ounce to about a half ounce. Chase flatties a lot with this, with hard bodies. I did a lot of hard body, not that any of that paid off, but that was the plan. Hard bodies, it's got, it's quite a stiffer, it's a, it's a lot stiffer than the two to 10 pound. There's five to 16 pound, it's a fair bit of a jump up. I feel like there should be a rod in the middle, but it's glad that there's not, because that would have cost me a lot more money. So yeah, I was running hard bodies or the quarter ounce for flathead or three eighth of an ounce or even a half ounce. I'm gonna be using this along pontoons, jacks in summer, as well as bait casters. I also did chuck sugar pen 95 worked really well on this and your poppers work really well on this rod as well. This is a great all round rod paired with the Caldia 3000. Suffix, 20 pound braid. I normally run a 12 to 20 pound leader depending on what I'm chasing around what sort of structure. I also did try for Dewey's with this rod as well. Did get a Dewey on this rod actually. 78 centimeter Dewey. Really enjoying this reel. It's a beast of a thing. Got my Spotty Max and my Mac tuners on that when I took it offshore. Did hook something big on this out in the ocean too in one of my videos. Didn't end very well, so probably not the best outsider rod. Reel wise, definitely does the job. Moving up to a next favorite of mine. I love the Surtates. Can't believe I bought two of them. Surtate. And we've got, I love high speed reels, just be able to get the line up quicker. You know, in contact with your line at all times definitely helps fishing wise. So this one's the 312 high speed Surtate. I've got that paired with the six to 20 pound Megabass Racing Condition, lure weight up to one ounce or 28 grams. I have thrown for Dewey's the one and a half ounce with it as well, but that was just jigging. That was not like casting it. So it was kind of just dropping it down. So it can cast a little bit over its, its weight, but wouldn't recommend it. Gonna be using this for burning lures past pontoons, those deep divers around bridges and that sort of thing. Big six inch plastics along bridge pylons for big jacks. Really nice rod for, for a six to 20 pound rod, something that has a lot of backbone. It, the, all these rods are extremely light. Moving up to the final spin gear that I've got completely set up. We've got 30 pound suffix braid on a Daiwa. Oh, what is it? Daiwa Solstice X 4000H. So it's the high speed. Yeah, 30 pound suffix braid. I have got that on the Samaki Vanquish two piece. Uh, it's a joiner that joins in here. It's not two piece halfway down the rod. Really like that. It's a 25 to 40 pound rod. Cast weight is up to 85 grams, I believe. Really nice rod when you go outside and you're dropping those big plastics down and anything like that. Might even use this for big hard bodies along some of the bigger bridges around the Gold Coast, like when the jacks have really heated up. Just depending, I'll probably be running a 50 to 60 pound leader on that. I was running 40, but it just seems to be too light. I forgot to mention, I normally run a 
25 to 30 pound liter on this bad boy. So yeah, that's the Samaki Vanquish with the Saltus X 4000. And then finally moving on to the last rod that I picked up. It's a Nobi 8 foot 6 two piece. Again, it joins just above the handle. It's a 30 to 60 pound rod or PE3 to PE6. Lure weight casts up to 100 grams. I bought this as one of my off the rock setups. I actually ordered two. I ordered this one, the PE3 to 6. And then I also ordered the PE4 to 10. I uh, know 4 to 8 with a 200 gram cast weight. And they actually sent me two of the eight foot six in the same class rating. So thanks Novi, awesome job. I haven't been able to pair this up with anything yet. I do, I'm not even sure what I plan to put on this one yet because I do want a heavier setup to cast those, those 200 gram lures. It actually looks pretty good. Just a shame that I ordered two and, and now I'm only left with one. I did offload one of, my, one of them to my friend because I had two of the exact same rods. That's all my spin rods done. Now let's move on to the bait casters. Starting at the top, we've got this one I just picked up this season for my crankbaits. We've got, these are the bait casters I love, is the Shimano Scorpion and the Shimano Corrado. They're both exactly the same. The only difference is one comes in black and one comes in gray. I've got this paired with the Samurai Refraction. Samurai Refraction, 16 to 20 pound, five foot six. Because I'm so low to the water, I wanted a really short rod that I could really twitch down and uh, get those lures moving through the water and give line back to them. Found this rod, thought this would be the great rod. I have used it a couple of times and really enjoying it so far. Got 20 pound suffix braid on that and normally I'll probably be running 30 pound litre with my hard bodies over summer around pontoons and rock walls, 30 pound litre. Moving down to the next one, favourite jack setup. I use this for walkers, poppers, soft plastics around pontoons. This one I caught a lot of fish on last season. This is my scorpion. Oh, the retrieve is 7.2 and 7.2 on this one, I believe, as well. I did want the 8.2, but I ordered the wrong one, but seven's been working fine. This is the big sexy, big sexy six foot six, 12 to 17 pound. Cast weight, a quarter of an ounce to five eighths. I normally throw a half ounce on this rod, three eighths to a half ounce, or my poppers or my walkers. 20 pound braid and I normally run a 25 pound leader on this bad boy. I love this rod. This is a fantastic rod. It, just a great all round jack rod really. Been using it a lot and can't put it down, especially paired with this. Uh, because it's got such a large butt section, this smaller reel really pairs well if you've got smaller hands like me, or feminine hands as we call them. Then moving on to my last rod we can have a look at is my swim bait rod. I picked this up just before I went cod fishing and then picked the reel up a couple of weeks ago. I've been using this for the last three days while it's been pouring rain, searching for some jacks and barra around the Gold Coast. Only one Trev so far and five foul hooked mullet. But this is the Chichula 7 foot 6. It's a one piece, but you can shorten it down to about six, eight, I think, just by it collapses into itself. Really nice rod, been liking it, and it's quite a nice weight. This is the lighter version that comes in two. And this one's the five to eight inch swim baits. Uh, I don't know why they didn't put a grammage or an ounce on that. I haven't really tested it out. I'm gonna buy a new lure soon that'll test it out up to 100 grams and I'll see how that goes. So yeah, seven foot six, nine to 15 kilo rating. This is the lighter version of it. Really nice. And I've got this paired with the Shimano. This is the brand new Shimano 200K Corrado. Uh, they said it was 15% smaller than the other ones. So I thought, why not give it a crack and actually been really liking it. Did have one issue the other day. My line snapped and I cast off a swim bait in the creek looking for flatheads. And I was just devastated because my, my suffix just snapped. I have no idea why. But I spent the next hour swimming around looking for the thing and couldn't find it, so I'm one swim bait down this week, so YouTube budget completely blown. That's the 6.2. This is probably one of my slowest retrieve reels. I bought this for swim bait, so you kind of don't want a high retrieve reel. Really nice reel, really liking it. Love the Corrados. So that's all my rods and reels. Yeah, do plan on getting one or two more setups for the big land-based game off the rocks type of stuff. But that'll be pretty much be it for the next couple of years. So anything else, I'll just kind of tell you along the way. Down here, we've got all my boxes that, that came with the reels, all my suffix braid that I've kind of got left over. 
Bought my Suffolk's 20 pound braid off Amazon. You can get, yeah, 1200 yards or 1100 meters for, for like a hundred bucks. So I just bought that and spilled up all my reels. And then we've got, I use FC Rock Leader. I'm gonna try and get all of them, but at the moment they're the ones I've just stocked up on. Six, eight, 10, 12, 25, 30, and 40. I do need 50 and 60 for the offshore and around some bridge pylons when the jacks start going mental. These are some of my lures. Started stocking up on some off the rocks lures and my swim baits. I did lose my tail this morning. Just cast it and it just fell off. Not too happy about that because now I have to order a new tail and Mo Tackles is the only ones that sell the new tails for the Gantiers. It's like eight bucks and then it's like, if you want to get it delivered to your place, it's like $12 shipping and I'm not doing that. So I'm going to order a whole heap of new stuff so I go over the $125 limit. So I'm just going to buy some new swim baits for this jack season and then if they survive the cod season next year. Sorry, the videos haven't been going up regularly. I found it really difficult through winter to fish before and after work because the sun gets up late and then goes down early. Summer's coming around, sun's up at 4.30 these days. So I'm gonna try and get back into the swing of things, fishing morning and afternoon, start pumping out these summer videos. Really looking forward to Jackson and Trev fishing over the summer, can't wait. I have a massive, um, kind of thing to reveal after this coming jack season that'll help me fish through winter hopefully so thanks for watching guys hope you enjoyed it make sure to give it a big old thumbs up if you enjoyed it and any questions leave them in the comments below hopefully the next video is an on water see you next episode